but the 1930s especially put kayfabe on hard times. And it starts with Jack Pfeffer, a man that would look at every evil thing Vince McMahon has ever done and say, I remember when men were men, pussy. You can't even say the P word. The weird <laughs> pronunciation that should not be just glazed over in the middle of this episode, okay? Pfeffer was a promoter of the era, mostly in the New York scene, although he traveled around a bit. He was famous for all the underhanded shitbag promoter stuff we all know and love, but he had a deep love for hack ripoff gimmicks. He'd just call someone Frank Gooch or Greg Hackensmith, Gorgeous Jim. In fact, Buddy Rogers started as a knockoff Gorgeous George before splitting from Pfeffer. Pfeffer had a big falling out with Jack Curley and a collection of primarily Northeast promoters that basically squeezed him out of the business. And from everything I've learned about him, he probably deserved it. But this bitch, this little bitch, ran straight to the New York Daily Mirror or the New York Times, I've heard it both ways, and sang like Takeshi 6 9 While these were most certainly not the first time newspaper articles had questioned the validity of wrestling, this prompted a series of articles from December 1933 throughout 34 exposing pro wrestling as a work way before Nick and Mac Jackson could do it with super kicks. Be careful. Be careful what you say. <laughs> careful. You've been warned. You've been warned. I, I don't think this will be the last Young Buck reference in this episode. <laughs> be warned there are consequences to your actions <laughs> okay. and your words. Nick, can you start slapping your leg every time you tell a punchline? Fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. 